So if now what we're looking at is if I have an angle, um, and this angle is represented as pi over 12. So, or I'm sorry, pi, I'm sorry, theta over 2. This is represented as a half angle. So if I have a half angle, which is pi over 12, and I want to be able to evaluate for actually what is going to be the evaluation of that angle. The half angle formulas, if I want to evaluate for the tangent what am I doing? of pi over 2, okay, theta over 2. I don't know why I wrote that. If I want to evaluate for the tangent of theta over 2, where theta over 2 is equal to 12, I need to go and use the tangent formula. Now, like the, multi, like the double angles for cosine, we had multiple, multiple um, formulas, right? For tangent, we have the same thing, which is sine over, sine over 1 plus cosine. Or we could also use 1 minus cosine over sine. OK? Now, either one of these formula guys, it does not matter which one you guys want to use. Obviously, again, you'll be presenting these, and you get to pick which one. You're going to get the same answer. To make this video a little bit simpler, um, let's go ahead and use this formula. The reason why I'm using this one, it doesn't matter, guys. You can use either one. They're all on the same page in your book, and you're all going to be given a nice sheet of paper with them um, written on there anyways. Okay. So, but I'm going to use this one because I like using monomials in my denominator rather than binomials, right? Yes? You don't. It doesn't matter which one you use. Sometimes when you get into, when we do verifying or simplifying, sometimes ones are easier than the other. But when we're just evaluating these, it's, I mean, it's really not going to matter. But yeah, we're just plugging in our values. So here's, our, here's the big issue, though, that we need to. Notice how theta divided by 2 equals pi over 12, right? But the equation is not calling for theta over 2. It's calling for theta, OK? So here's where the big misconception students make, is they want to plug in pi over 12 in for theta. But pi over 12 is not theta. Pi over 2, or theta over 2, is equal to, 12, is equal to pi over 12. So what we need to do is determine what theta is. So I'll do it over here. So to determine what theta is going to be, I'll multiply by 2 on both sides. And theta equals pi over 6. Now, is it, can I evaluate for pi over 6 with sine, cosine, and tangent? Yeah. Yes. Can I evaluate for pi over 12 for sine, cosine, and tangent? Not using our unit circle that we've done, right? You have to use a calculator and get some approximate values. So now I just plug it in. 1 minus the cosine of pi over 6 all over the sine of pi over 6. Yes? Two pi over what? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing like solving inverses. I'm not trying to produce equivalent fraction. I'm trying to isolate the, my theta. Since theta is being divided by 2, what's the, what's the inverse of dividing by 2? What's the opposite of dividing by 2? What's the opposite of dividing? Multiplying. So you multiply on both sides, and now theta is by itself. Right? We're solving. We're not trying to produce equivalent equations, so you just multiply by 2. Well, you're dividing. Yeah. That just simplifies to pi over 6. Right? 2 over 12 is, pi, is 1 over 6. OK, so now I need to evaluate this. So I go and look at my unit circle. And if we have pi over 6, which is going to be right here, which is square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. So if I need to evaluate for cosine and sine, guys, can you seriously? So therefore, I have 1 minus cosine, which is square root of 3 over 2 divided by sine, which is 1 half. Now, to me, I don't really want to deal with those um, twos in the denominator. So what I'll do is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom 
by 2. All right? So if I multiply the top and the bottom by 2, again, by applying distributive property, I now I'm going to obtain a solution of 2 minus the square root of 3 as these multiply to 1. And that's it. Done.